With Monday Thursday, we begin our observance of the Trigium Sacrum, the sacred three days of Holy Week that spans from this Holy Thursday through Good Friday and Holy Saturday up to the Great Vigil of Easter. It is with the Trigium that the Church is to remain at prayer, not dismissed until we conclude the Great Vigil of Easter and the first celebration of the Paschal Eucharist. This year, this is especially poignant and incredibly profound to consider that we cannot even gather around the physical altar in which to be dismissed. How we can remain in prayer, far more than a question, we can make this our plan, how each of us can remain in prayer through these days, and not just in words or even in silence, but how we can dedicate all of who we are and what we do as an offering to God and to keep ever the mind of Jesus. The final solemn collect, as well as what follows in the last reading of the vigil, has what I consider to be one of the most profound prayers we can offer. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new. And that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome to the Trigium of Holy Week. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I say to you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man had been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, 
Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. As elaborate or as exhaustive as the Gospel according to John is with the telling of the events of Monday Thursday, the evening before Jesus' crucifixion, after all, John devotes upwards of five of the 21 chapters to give us this complete scene. What's missing here surprises a casual reader. There is a meal, but this is not the institution of the Lord's Supper we know so well from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And so with the readings appointed for this Thursday in Holy Week, we need to go to what is historically an earlier source of, from the Gospels themselves for the Lord's Supper. We turn to Paul in his first letter to the church in Corinth. What we do have in John, however, is a deep and vivid focus to what Jesus means as he gives us a new commandment. This is where the name of this day, after all, derives from. Monday, Thursday, mandatum, commandment. Everything can and I believe must be seen by the lens of this new commandment Jesus gives us. In verse 34 we hear, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. We also see immediately that this is not some new idea but something that changes everything we thought about ourselves, our neighbor, and especially what we think about God and what God does in our life. And more than an abstract idea or a construct, Jesus models this commandment himself before he even talks about it. We hear or read back in verse 2, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot what he had, was going to be doing as betraying Jesus. And what immediately follows this? It's then that Jesus gets up, takes off his robes, and washes the feet of not just one of or two of the disciples, but all of the disciples, including Judas, all of them, no exceptions. That's the love we celebrate in this church. God loves you, no exceptions. That's what this commandment is all about. Jesus even goes on to teach Peter, who objects to Jesus' care in this way, Peter, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. This sounds so simple that we almost dismiss it, but this is the lens by which we are now to live. We are to embody selfless love, more than an emotion or momentary thought, and definitely more than a pleasantry. Love as Jesus talks about and demonstrates this night, Good Friday, and what God demonstrates about with Easter itself. The very basis by which we live, move, and have our being. How we serve, how we care, how we pray, how we lead, it's all part of how we love. And this kind of love, it takes us far beyond just ourselves. It creates a whole new body, the body of Christ. And that's what we celebrate this night with Monday, Thursday. Amen.
Prayers of the People are form three, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our words may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who commended themselves to our prayers, especially remembering this week, Jim, Jane, Diane, the Barnes family, the Gazzara family, Blair, Charlie, Holly, Katie, Keith, Sue, Van, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders, and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus and on all others who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest all those who have died from COVID-19. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy and we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for peace in our homes and around the world, remembering those who have lost their homes and families to violence here and abroad, as well as those who serve and protect our own freedom, especially Will, Stephen Harrison, Matt, Becky, Jeff, Jennifer, Steve, Philip, and Perrin, for their safety and for the just use of the power that is placed in their hands. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I invite your own petitions and thanksgivings offered up either silently or aloud. Loving God, inspire us to reach out to those facing life's chance changes and challenges. Guide and empower our pastoral care team and especially all our Stephen ministers and leaders as they provide spiritual companionship to those in need of support and understanding. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.